Thanks, doctor. Uh, up next, we have somebody with the initials appropriately, MD. MD, if we can have your question. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Lee, I know you cannot give medical advice, um, but my question is more of uh, an approach. So for example, I'm, I'm working with um, a good friend that has an adrenal tumor that is related to cushions. And so there's some seriousness with regards to high blood pressure, et cetera. I've talked to about 10 different doctors and everybody you know, wants to do the surgery. My question is, even if that is required, my question always is, isn't there, can we look at other approaches? And the very arrogant answer I get is, nope, there's nothing else you can do. It, and then I say, isn't there a way for this thing to reduce? If it can grow, can't it go down? Can it go the other way? And this, this friend of mine actually has been doing, you know, nutritional kinds of therapy for years and years. So that wasn't, you know, that's still ongoing. So my question is, how do you find uh, a healthcare provider, you know, with the internet and everything, trying to go out there, do the searches, do the telehealth. It's very, very difficult. I know there's a way, but I thought maybe you had a, an approach to find maybe someone that would talk to us about angiogenesis, which by the way, is pretty ex interesting. Yeah, so again, without giving medical advice, let me maybe share with you and for everyone where the future of medicine is coming when it comes to cancer. Um, and this is something that I'm actually um, uh, quite involved with now. So I know that it's not just science fiction, but it's science fact. Somebody with a tumor, regardless of what type of tumor is, regardless of where it is, um, uh, you know, the, the playbook says, if you can remove it with surgery, remove it with surgery. If you can't remove it with surgery, you got medicines and it ranges from chemo to targeted therapy to immunotherapy. Um, so that, you know, those are sort of the, the standard playbook uh, approaches. In the future, how we're going to treat every cancer is we're going to actually get a biopsy of the cancer, not just to identify the type of cancer it is, whether it's a liver cancer, a colon cancer, a brain tumor, adrenal tumor, you name the cancer, could be any. And then what we do is we send it to a lab to do full genome analysis, where you basically, it's like crime scene investigation, CSI, you look at all the genes, 30,000 human genes, and you look at every single one of the tumor. And then you also get a, a, a blood draw from the same person with normal healthy cells like white blood cells, and you do the exact same thing. Now you got 30,000 normal genes studied from a normal cell and 30,000 genes um, from the tumor. And then you use artificial intelligence because the human brain can't do it. 30,000 versus 30,000 back and forth, back and forth, which ones are only in the tumor, which ones are not in actually the normal cell. And when you do that, you let the machine chug, right? Um, it, it spits out um, which are the mutations that are found only in the tumor. It doesn't matter what tumor it is. Frankly, it doesn't even matter where the tumor came from. Once you know what those mutations are, you can then use a database to decide if there are any existing medicines that can hit those targets. Okay. Um, and the next part is, and this is a, this is like, you know, wait for it. This is the exciting part. You can take those mutations that are not found, that are found only in the tumor and not in the healthy cells. And you can actually move those mutations onto a computer screen, okay? Like, 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 a, like a Photoshop computer screen. You can stitch them together, like make a pearl necklace uh, di uh, diagrammatically on the screen. And then you could hit print and you can have a 3D printer print those proteins, let's say 10 or 20 proteins that are only present in that tumor as a protein that's stitched together like a pearl necklace. You get a little powder, little vial powder, and then you take that powder and you inject it under the skin of the patient. And now you can vaccinate the patient against their own cancer. And so this is really what is going to be the future. I mean, I, I can tell you that this is coming. It's the most natural thing you can think about. I mean, we're talking about, you know, if you can actually immunize yourself against HPV to prevent cervical cancer, in the future, we're gonna be able to immunize ourselves against the cancer that was taken out of your own body. And so I wouldn't stress so much about the surgery versus the chemo versus the anti angio If you go to any academic medical center, actually, there's a, there's a, um, a little trick here. Clinicaltrials.gov, clinicaltrials.gov, G-O-V, is a search engine. If you type up angiogenesis and whatever tumor you're interested in and look at all the clinical trials, at the bottom of the list will be the medical centers where they're conducting those trials. You can then 
call the medical center and figure out if they're taking patients. That's probably my strategy that I would actually recommend. Wow. Uh, thank you for that, doctor. And up next is Sonia. Sonia, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Sonia. Are you there? We're just waiting. There you I'm go. here. I'm here. Oh, my God. First of all, I got to tell you, Dr. Lee, I have followed you since you were on Dr. Oz with the, with the scanner, that scanner that you used about antioxidants. You are my, one of my rock stars. I've been in the nutritional business for over 20 years. You know, study. I almost was going to work with Gerson therapies and help people. I mean, I've been really into this for a long period of time. So you, you may have just answered my question because my question was based on um, basal cell cancers and angiogenesis and, you know, the information that I've been getting for prevention or slowing that down through with natural substances is just basically a, a, a large range of different foods that cover the orange, which are the beta carotenes or maybe the lycopene areas. I was just curious to know if you've run across anything that you can say on a clinical trial um, in that particular case of skin cancer, basal cell. Yeah, so, um, and this is gonna be the last question I, I, I'm able to answer, but um, uh, thank you, Sonia, for, for the question. Basically, the skin is one of the most vulnerable areas for damage to our DNA because what happens, right? We go outside, I mean, forget about people who go into um, tanning salons. Uh, forget about people that burn on the beach by you know coating their bodies in olive oil people you know people who are uh, um, alert and to health don't do that kind of stuff very much anymore but if you're stuck in traffic you know on a highway on a sunny day uh, with the window down that sun is coming in you're still getting um, ultraviolet radiation which then makes our skin one of the most vulnerable point places um, our face our exposed surfaces to being able to actually develop um, common skin cancers like basal cell cancer. Now, basal cell cancer is actually, you know, it classic, it doesn't, generally doesn't, it's not a lethal cancer, it generally doesn't kill you, but it can be quite serious and it can grow in areas that you don't want it to grow. And so the traditional things to do are to cut it out or burn it out or freeze it. But those, you know, that, that, that's, that can be disfiguring and it's a lot of trouble. And because your whole face, for example, got exposed by the ultra radi violet radiation, it's, it's called field cancerization. The entire field's been damaged. So one of the things that um, uh, uh, we're looking at is how do you actually not just do piecemeal, you know, spot treatments, but how can you treat that whole area? There are creams that are used. Um, and so I'm just citing a research paper um, that uses a, a tr cream called Aldera or Imiquimod um, that actually you sp spread it on and it upregulates your immune system to go after the skin cancers. And that works and it's been FDA approved for that. Um, but what's, what's interesting and it raises the idea that we can actually use immune boosting foods as well. And it makes me think as you're talking about this, not only um, eating foods that actually help your immune system but also foods that can support your gut microbiome so that you can attack a skin cancer, not just from the top down um, with the cream but from the bottom up from inside using your own immune system to lower inflammation, increase those natural immune cancer finders and seekers and killers, but to also be able to um, uh, treat a larger area, treat a larger area by having your immune system just cover all that stuff. Cause that's 60,000 miles of blood vessels I told you about with angiogenesis, your immune super soldiers are actually racing through there covering all that skin as well. So um, I wanna thank you all for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak to you and um, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to be a part. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, uh, uh, for uh, your introduction.